and the Son of Yahweh. There is much confusion among mankind regarding who the Messiah is. Some religions teach that he is the Son of God. Others say that he was a prophet. Some say he was the leader of the Christian religion, and some say he is God. First, we have to realize that the Bible is a mystery to most people who attempt to encode it. I've heard some say that it is a book written by King James or Shakespeare. Some say it is a fictitious book full of metaphors and symbolism. If you haven't been given spiritual eyes to see and ears to hear, you would be apt to believe those things. But the truth is, this book was written by Hebrew Israelites for Hebrew Israelites to teach the world how to govern themselves according to the laws of Yahweh. This culture was given to the Hebrews. It is their wisdom, knowledge, and understanding among the nations. Because of the mysteries of the Bible, there is much controversy surrounding the much talked about but completely misunderstood Messiah, so-called Jesus Christ. But hopefully, by the end of this program, you will have a new understanding of who the Messiah really is. Let's start with King David. After Saul, who was the first king of Israel, who the children of Israel chose for themselves, failed to do as was commanded by Yahweh, Yahweh sent the prophet Samuel to a Bethlehemite named Jesse, saying, I have provided me a king among his sons. Just as the children of Israel did in selecting a king who was tall and good-looking when they saw Saul, Samuel attempted to do the same thing when he first encountered Jesse's son. But Yahweh said, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, for Yahweh sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but Yahweh looks on the heart. David was a man after Yahweh's heart, the youngest and ruddy son of Jesse. And although he did error, he was a soldier for Israel. He loved his people, and even more, he loved his God. You're probably wondering why we just dealt with King David and wondering what in the world he has to do with the Messiah. Let's move forward and tie this all together. David had a desire to build a magnificent house for Yahweh to dwell in. He said, See, now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of Elohim dwell within curtains. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for Yahweh is with you. And Yahweh said, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says Yahweh, Shall you build me an house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. Now therefore, so shall you say unto my servant David, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, I took you from the sheep coat, from following the sheep to be a ruler over my people, over Israel. Also, Yahweh tells you that he will make you in house. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. Yahweh made a covenant with David and promised him that it would be his son, the fruit of his loins that Yahweh will set on his throne. David would have a son who would become Yahweh's son, and his kingdom would be everlasting. David understood this covenant and wrote about it in his Psalms. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant, your seed will I establish forever and build up your throne to all generations. Who is this son? Some think it was Solomon, David's son who reigned after him. It is true, Solomon is the son of David, and true, he was a king in Israel. But does Solomon fit the bill? 
Remember, Yahweh said, He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. When Solomon died, he didn't resurrect, and there has never been any promise of him living forever, reigning for a thousand years or any of the sort. When did he become Yahweh's son? Was he prophesied to regather the children of Israel? After the death of Solomon, the kingdom of Israel split between his sons, Jeroboam and Rehoboam. So, if this covenant or promise made with David wasn't meant to be fulfilled by Solomon, which son of David's was Yahweh referring to? In the beginning of the book of Matthew, it walks through the genealogy of Yahshua. And in the first few verses, it says, The book of the generation of Yahshua the Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Let's read a little of the story of the announcement of his birth. Now the birth of Yahshua the anointed was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not to take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. That is indeed what Yahshua means. Yahweh's salvation. Before we go any further, let's deal with this a little deeper. There are many who have a hard time really understanding that Yahshua the Messiah is indeed the direct son of David, just as Solomon is. So let's prove it. Even Mary, the mother of Yahshua, knew who her child's father was. The book of Luke says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from Elohim unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail you who are highly favored. Yahweh is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And you have had favor with Elohim. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahshua. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And Yahweh Elohim shall give unto him the throne of his father, David, and he shall reign over the house of Israel, house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Can't get more plain than that. And don't be confused, as some are, into thinking that Yahshua was only referred to as the son of David because he was born from the tribe of Judah, which is the tribe David came out of. But so did his mother Mary come from Judah. And it is also fact that Joseph, who was Mary's husband, came from the same tribe. That is law amongst the children of Israel. Not only were we forbidden to marry outside of our race, but we had even been told not to even marry from the tribe, not to even marry from tribe to tribe due to inheritance. Yahshua is not the son of David because he comes from the lineage or tribe of David. He is David's son directly, the same way in which you yourself are the son or daughter of your father. Mary was impregnated with the seed of David, just as Yahweh promised him. Let's go back a minute. Now, the birth of Yahshua the anointed as on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 
Now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Yahweh through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. This had to be done to fulfill the covenant with David, when Yahweh said, And when your days be fulfilled, and you shall sleep with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, which shall proceed out of your bowels. Yahshua himself knew who his father was. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and the morning star. Now that we have proven Yahshua to be the son of David, the flesh and blood son of a flesh and blood man, let's deal with his becoming the son of Yahweh. John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way. While John was in Bethbara beyond the Jordan baptizing, he saw Yahshua coming and said, Behold the Lamb of Yah, who takes away the sins of the world. This Yahshua was the lamb, the human sacrifice that Yahweh prepared to take away the animal sacrifices and to bring Israel back to him. Before the Messiah came, Yahweh gave the children of Israel animals to sacrifice to atone for their sins. The animals were the schoolmaster or the grace that was spoken of by Paul in his letter to the Galatians. So, what does all this mean? The wages of sin is death. There has to be bloodshed to atone for sin. And because of the mercy of Yahweh, during the days of our forefathers, he allowed them to sacrifice animals, to shed animals' blood in exchange for their own lives, to atone for their sin. These sacrifices were the ordinances that worked with the law. If you broke a law, you were to bring a certain number of a certain kind of animal to the priest to slaughter for you before Yahweh to atone for the sin that you committed. This is the law that was added or the schoolmaster unto the day of the Messiah. Those animal sacrifices did not bring forth righteousness. Listen to what the book of Hebrews says. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because the worshipers once purged should have no remembrance of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he come into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offerings you would not, but a body have you prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins you have had no pleasure, by which where we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahshua, the anointed once and for all, for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Yahshua the Messiah was this body that Yahweh prepared, the one that the Apostle Paul deemed the propitiation for our sins that are past. So for those who mistakenly think that Christ nailed all of that old law to the cross, guess again. He only took away the sacrificial laws when he became that lamb, that sacrifice. The laws of Yahweh still stand, and Yahshua walked in them perfectly as our example. Okay, let's go back to breaking down when Yahshua became the son of Yahweh, as was promised by covenant to David. In the book of Matthew, he accounts of the baptism of Yahshua. It speaks of Yahshua coming to John at the Jordan River to be baptized, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of you, and come you to me? And Yahshua answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becomes us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. 
and he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Let's get some understanding about what happened here. Let's go back to verses 16 through 17. And Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Who was this spirit that Yahshua saw descending from heaven like a dove and essentially dwelling within him? He is referred to as God in the English translation, but Elohim in Hebrew. Let's let John explain to us who this deity is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Let's prove all things. Let's reference the beginning of things. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. Then it goes on to say, And Elohim said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Who is the us that was present? Elohim is the one who said, let us. Who was he talking to? This is the one whom John spoke of when he said, in the beginning was the word. Elohim is the son of Yahweh, the only begotten of Yahweh, who has been with him from the beginning. The one who created all things, the one who created man in his own image. Let's let this deity introduce himself. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abound with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, when he gave to the sea its decree that the water should not pass his commandment, then I was by him, a one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and, on, and my delight was with the sons of men. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they who keep my ways. Hear instructions and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man who hears me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso finds me, finds life, and shall obtain favor of Yahweh. But he that sins against me, wrongs his own soul. All that hate me, love death. He is the one who named the nation of Israel after himself. Yahweh's chosen people are called Israelites, not Yahwehites. Israel has always been the glory of Yahweh. He is the obedient son who came down and dwelt in Yahshua, a flesh and blood man. Then was Yahshua Emmanuel, which interpreted means Elohim with us. 
He is the one who is seated on the throne in the book of Revelation, not the Messiah. If you remember in Revelations 5, Yahshua was the lamb who stood to take the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. It wasn't Yahweh. Scriptures tell us that no man has seen Yahweh at any time, and this was a revelation shown to John. To fully understand this mystery takes prayer and study of the scriptures. Then will you begin to really see the duality of Yahshua and Israel throughout the letters of the New Testament. When Yahshua was talking to the Pharisees and said to them, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. The Jews said unto him, You are not yet fifty years old. And have you seen Abraham? Yahshua said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. That's a powerful statement. Was Yahshua born before Abraham? What about in the book of 2 Corinthians, when Paul accounts of Elohim being in the Messiah, reconciling the world back to himself? And there are many times throughout the letters of the New Testament when the author gives glory and praise to Elohim, Yahweh, and Yahshua the Messiah. We saw all the miracles that the Messiah worked through this God, feeding multitudes and raising the dead. But at the point of the death of Yahshua is where we see Israel leaving his body to return to his throne in heaven. As it is noted in the book of John, he said, It is done. Israel had finished the work that Yahweh sent him to do. But Yahshua, after he gave up that spirit, he lay there dead on the feast of Passover. He became that Passover lamb. He was buried and lay dead through the next day, which was the Sabbath feast of unleavened bread. Then early, as the third day, which was the holy day of the Feast of First Fruits, Yahshua, the anointed Messiah of Israel, rose as the Son of Yahweh with all power, all glory, all dominion, and all majesty. Paul says in his letter to those in Corinth, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Let's summarize as we conclude. King David desired to build a house for Yahweh, and in turn, Yahweh made a covenant with David, stating that he would build David a house and give him a son, a son that would proceed from his own body, that he would sit on David's throne and allow this son to reign forever. This son was not Solomon. Solomon died and the kingdom split in the hands of his sons. Yahweh also needed a way to remove the animal sacrifices from the people because though that law was good because it was a grace that was given to the people to atone for their sins instead of them having to give their own lives, it didn't teach them righteousness because the righteousness of the law was not in their hearts. So Yahweh both fulfilled his covenant with David and brought about reconciliation of the children of Israel when he gave David a son through Mary and sent his son Israel to dwell within David's son for three and a half years. Yahshua became the holy vessel used to house a God. Remember, Emmanuel means God is with us. So that this God who created a people and named them after himself could reconcile them back to himself by showing them through example how to honor the laws the culture and way of life that he himself had given them from the beginning. When Yahshua died and resurrected from the dead as the first fruits to Yahweh, the first to have that immortal body that we all aspire for, he rose King of kings and Lord of lords with all power, 
majesty, and glory. Israel finally had in Adam a son who is the perfect example of righteousness. Remember, his delight is the sons of men, and he wanted them to be the example of righteousness in the earth. Yahshua earned the right to have all knees bow before him. Because he died, we all live. And no man can come to the Father but by him. He will return not as a lamb the way that he died, but as the lion of the tribe of Judah to put down all this corruption in the earth. When he returns to save his people, restore Israel, and set up a righteous kingdom of complete peace. Yahshua is Yahweh's salvation. This has been Samira Israel with another production of Beyond the Surface. Thank you. In these days and times, we hear a lot of things about the Messiah, uh, why he came and so forth. But when you listen to people today and go back and read the scripture, we find out that the scripture says something totally different from what man says today. Sure, we know that the Messiah uh, uh, will eventually save all of mankind, but the reason why the Messiah came uh, this is what most people uh, 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 disregard, and that's simply because the people that produced the Messiah, the Christians have put them in, in captivity here uh, uh, in America, brought us over as slaves, and now we are held captives in America, and they took over, and they have taught this thing back to us when we, the Hebrews, were sent to teach the, uh, the world. Remember, the Hebrews wrote the Bible, and the Hebrews were the ones that went and taught the Europeans uh, uh, when Yahweh sent, when Yahshua rather sent Paul up into Europe uh, to teach the Gentiles. Now, the nation telling us that we are all Gentiles and Christianity is the largest religion on the face of the earth, and it was all started by Euro Gentiles. Just because the apostles were called Christians first at Antioch does not mean that they were uh, Christians. But to understand these things, we have to understand what was written down as to why the Messiah had to come and what would be his duties when he came to this earth besides uh, 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 dying and being resurrected. I'd like to read something to you out of uh, Psalms chapter 132. Now understand that Yahweh had already made a covenant with, with David in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7 pertaining to uh, his son, uh, the Messiah, being the son of David and would be born into the house of David. Surely Joseph and Mary was of the house of David. But let me read something to you out of Psalms chapter 132. And I'm going to start this at verse 10. Yahweh says, For my servant Dawid's sake, I will not turn away, turn not thy face away from thine anointing. Yahweh have sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of your body will I sit on the, your throne. Of the fruit of your body, David, will I sit on upon your throne. So we can understand that it was David's seed that was held and planted in Mary so that the Messiah would be born into the house of David, a fleshly uh, man that was born upon this earth. Verse 12, if your children keep my covenant, and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children also shall sit upon your thrones forever. For Yahweh has chosen Judah, he has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her pool with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a, a, a lamp for mine anointed. 
His enemies will I close with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish, meaning that the crown of David, of the house of David, would be put upon the uh, uh, head of the Messiah that was born in the house of David. Now, let me read you something else here that was said by the prophet Isaiah uh, uh, pertaining to the Messiah. This is Isaiah uh, uh, chapter 9, and I'm going to start this at verse 5. Uh, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments wrapped in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. He's talking about the war of Armageddon uh, right here. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Elohim, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh of hosts has performed this. The Adonai has sent a word into Jacob, and it has lighted upon Israel. So we see once again, not only was it mentioned in Psalm, but here it is again that uh, once the kingdom is set up, that Yahweh is going to cause the horn of David to bud here upon this earth as he set up on the throne of David from Jerusalem, Israel. I know that you've been told that you're going to heaven, but the prophets do not back that up. If the prophets don't back it up, neither do the apostles in the New Testament back it up. This is something that was conjured up by man himself. But let me read something else uh, uh, to you as to why the Messiah had to come. See, uh, Yahweh had gave our people those animal sacrifices and it was impossible for the uh, uh, blood of animals to cover man's sin. But this was given them as a propitiation for sin as the schoolmaster until uh, the Messiah would come who would be the human sacrifice for the house of Israel and for the house of Judah. And then once the house of Israel and the house of Judah received these things, then 10 years after Messiah was resurrected from the dead, Peter was sent to Cornelius, an Italian, and then later on Paul was sent up into Europe to, to uh, uh, teach the Gentiles. But understand, this was 10 years after Christ was resurrected from the dead. But let me read you some uh, reason as to why the Messiah had to, uh, uh, had to come. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, you people, from far. Yahweh has called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver has he hid me and said unto me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I've labored in vain. I spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with Yahweh and my work is with my Elohim. And now said the Adonai that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh, and my Elohim shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserves of, of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Euro Gentiles that you may be my salvation to the end uh, of the earth. Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhor, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of Yahweh that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Thus said Yahweh, in an acceptable time I have heard thee, and in the day of salvation I have helped you, and I will preserve you and give you for a covenant to the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritage, that you may say to the prisoners, Go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourself. They shall feed in the way, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. 
For he that have mercy on them shall lead them, even by springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make all my mountains away, and my highway shall be exalted. Behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north, and from the west, and from the land of Asia. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountain, for Yahweh has comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. So we know that the Messiah, according to Romans chapter 15, in verse 8, Paul said that Christ was the minister to the circumcision to confirm the promises that was made to our fathers. Well, let's see about that. See, Christ didn't come to the whole world, as man trying to say. The covenant wasn't made with the whole world. The covenant was made with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And the house of Israel and the house of Judah was sent among the nations uh, uh, to bring the nation towards salvation. But let me read something to you that uh, Matthew ever said in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter uh, 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 2, and I'm going to read verse uh, 1 through verse 6. Now when Yahshua was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. The question was, where is he that was born king of the Jews? Now, you're going to hear, and we've seen these little uh, 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 statues and so forth that they give us around Christmas time uh, uh, when they have a yellow man, a brown man, and a, and a black man, a white man come from the uh, east as the three kings. Not so. Only the children of Israel expected a king at this time. This is why Matt, uh, uh, the Messiah said he's not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where the Messiah should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come forth a governor that shall rule my people Israel. The Messiah's first job when he returned is to get, put on all rule and gather his people from the four corners of the earth and set them back in their own land. You might want to read the prophet Zechariah beginning at chapter 8. And, and see some of the things that's going to happen once the Messiah returns back to the earth. Like Yahweh said, I don't do anything should I tell my servants the prophets first. People talking about the Messiah can come any day. No, he can't. He can't come until certain prophecies uh, 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 be fulfilled. But let me go in the book of Luke and see what uh, uh, Luke had to say, uh, the people in Luke had to say about the time that uh, uh, that the Messiah returns back uh, to this earth. I'm going to the first chapter of Luke, and I'm going to read some things that were said uh, at that time. I'm going to Luke chapter 1, and I'm going to pick this up at verse 67. Now, John, uh, John, uh, Zechariah, the father of John, uh, had just named the child John. And uh, well, let's go and read some things that... Uh, uh, was said by by uh, by the Messiah. This is uh, Luke chapter one and verse uh, sixty-seven. And John's father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, "Blessed be the Adonai Elohim of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation in in, in the house of his servant David, as he spoke." by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the beginning of the world, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of them that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore unto our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear. If Yahweh don't send Messiah and deliver us soon, we as a people will be as extinct as the dodo bird. We're the only people on the earth that's not represented by anybody anywhere. 
verse 75, in holiness and in righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for you shall go before the face of Yahweh to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sin. Through the tender mercies of our Elohim, whereby the day spring from on high does visit us, to give light unto them that sin in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert until the day of his showing in Israel. So we can very well see that here again, the horn of salvation was raised up in the house of David to redeem Yahweh's holy people uh, uh, back to him. Now, what I like to do is I like to go and read uh, some things that the prophet Isaiah had to say pertaining to uh, uh, the things that the Messiah was going to uh, uh, accomplish when he uh, returned. And I'm going to Isaiah chapter 49 and read some things that were said. I'm going to read Isaiah 49 and I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 13. It says, Listen, O islands, unto me, and hearken you people from far. Yahweh has called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver has he hid me. Now this is the Messiah. Uh, 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 what was said about the Messiah. And said unto me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then said I, I have labored in vain. I spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with, my, with Yahweh and my work with my Elohim. And now said Yahweh to form me from the womb to be a servant to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh and my Elohim shall be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of, of Jacob and to preserve, uh, uh, restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Euro Gentiles that you may be my salvation uh, 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 in all of the earth. So we can very well see that this, this thing was done for one reason and for one reason alone, and that is for the Messiah came to raise up the tribe of Jacob. And then once he raised us up, and like I said before, we had the church 10 years among our people before uh, uh, Peter went to the Euro Gentiles to teach the Euro Gentiles uh, 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 this word. Now I'd like to read something else out of Isaiah chapter 53. Like I said before, Yahweh had given our people an animal sacrifice and that animal sacrifice could nothing do nothing for the conscience. The more animals you had, the more junk you got off into. So Yahweh has said an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, foot for foot, hand for hand, and blood for blood. So we had to have a human sacrifice that would be made. Now, let me read something to you out of Isaiah chapter 53 and see what this human sacrifice would, would, would bring about. Verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? Now the arm of Yahweh, he's talking about the Messiah now. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was oppressed and we esteem him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem, esteem him stricken, smitten of Elohim and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with he, uh, his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And Yahweh has uh, laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers a dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people 
was he stricken. Now remember, the Messiah hadn't sent Paul to the Gentiles at this time. The Messiah only walked among his own people and only taught among his own people. Uh, Isaiah 53 and verse 9. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he had done no violence, neither was there deceit in his mouth. Yet it pre pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you have made his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide with him a, a, a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and was numbered among the transgressions, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercessions for the transgressions who were the children of Israel. So we see the children of Israel, this is why Christ said, let the children be fed first. See, this is why we had the church 10 years before uh, 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 Christ uh, sent uh, Peter, I mean uh, uh, Paul, to the Euro Gentile. But let me read something else to you here uh, that was said that the Messiah had to say himself in the book of Matthew. I'm going to St. Matthew chapter 15, and I'm going to read some things uh, out of there for you. St. Matthew chapter 15, and I'm going to pick this up at verse, uh, St. Matthew 15 and verse uh, uh, 21. It says, Then Yahshua went there and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Cana came up at the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, uh, O Adonai, you son of David. My daughter is grievous to vex with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. John said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him gave he power to become the Son of God. Well, understand now, the subject was about who he came to, his own. So it was his own that was given uh, uh, the Holy Spirit 10 years before the, uh, uh, the Gentile Cornelius received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Adonai, help me. But he answered and said, It's not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Adonai, yet dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Yahshua answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. But what I wanted to get out of this was the Messiah had already said that he was not sent but to uh, uh, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, Israel had to be redeemed before the other nations could uh, uh, come under the blood of Yahshua, the, uh, 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 the Messiah. Like Paul said, like uh, uh Paul said, glory and honor is to the Jew first and then to the Euro-Gentile. Now, let me read something else to you out of, uh, 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 out of Isaiah. And I'm going to deal with some things that the Messiah himself dealt with in St. Luke chapter 4 uh, uh, in verse 16. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read in uh, Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Adonai Elohim is upon me because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh. Now, when you get into Luke, Luke chapter 4, you find out that that's when he closed the book and said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Well, let's read some things that's going to happen when the Messiah returns. Regardless of what you heard about everybody being whisked off to heaven, the big slab has been told. 
just because you're going to meet the Lord in the air, if you go back into Zechariah, Zechariah tell you, and that day his feet is going to stand on the Mount of Olives, the same place he ascended from. Uh, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahweh and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Judah, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolation. And they shall repair the waste cities, the desolation of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flock. And the son of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. What he that leadeth into captivity must go into captivity. But you shall be named the priest of Yahweh. Men shall call you the ministers of Elohim. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast yourself. For your shame you shall have double, and for their confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall uh, be am uh, among them. Verse 9. This is Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 9. And their seed, talk about the seed of Israel, shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them that you are uh, the seed which Yahweh has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in Yahweh. My soul shall be joyful in my Elohim. For he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bride decketh herself with her ornaments and as a bridegroom adorned herself with her jewels. Well, we know that Yahshua was given the power of salvation. For as the earth bring forth her bud, and as the garden causes the thing that are sown it to, it to spring forth, so Yahweh Elohim will cause righteousness to spring forth before all nations. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that, that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of Yahweh have, uh, shall name. You shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of Yahweh, and a royal diadem in the hands of your Elohim. You shall no more be turned forsaken, neither shall your land be, be termed desolate. Because, but you shall be called Hephzibah, which means uh, uh, married, and your land Beulah, for Yahweh delighteth in you, and the land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall your sons marry you, and as the bridegroom rejoice over the bride, so shall your Elohim rejoice over you. So as you can see, people are talking about a lot of things, but that does not mean that these things are true. You must know why the Messiah had to come the first place and what's going to take place when he comes back to this earth. And the only way you're going to do that is through studying your book. Now, let me read this last piece of scripture here. This is in Isaiah chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 5. The word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh and to the house of God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path, for the law shall go forth from Zion and the word of, 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 of Yah from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. As we see, the Messiah had a reason for coming the first time, and he definitely has a reason for coming up the last time. Uh, uh, so study your book. Come by if you have any questions. Call us, and we'll uh, answer those questions for you. Uh, my name is Yako.